these three small trees are striped maple trees. In this video, I'll show you some of its botanical features that help identify striped maple, as well as share with you some of its biology. It's quite interesting, I think you'll find. Striped maple is indigenous to North America, the eastern half of the continent, both Canada and the United States. From east to west, its range extends from Lake Huron all the way to Nova Scotia, and from north to south, from New Brunswick through New York to Pennsylvania. That would be its natural range or habitat, but here in the Pacific Northwest along the 49th parallel at sea level, it's planted for ornamental purposes. It's an ideal city tree for a number of reasons. One, it's small. These are mature trees. They are as big as they get. They don't provide a lot of shade, but they are not interfering with the power lines above, so they don't need excessive uh, trimming. Their trunk diameter, when they are mature, is about 25 centimeters, so or 11 inches, so this is as big as they get. Reason number two is that in its natural range, or just at all, striped maple is an understory in a forest canopy, so it's shade tolerant, ideal for city conditions, especially north facing slopes. No problem for the striped maple. So let's get started with the name striped maple. But the tree is also known as moosewood or moose maple. I'll explain why. It's called striped maple because its bark, its branches, but also its twigs and its trunk are striped. This striking pattern is really easy to notice and the tree is easily identifiable even in winter time. Now let me explain these stripes a little bit. If you run your finger across it, they feel a little bit bumpy. There's a difference in height. So what you're seeing here is 10 lines. These are ridges, these are high, high spots and these 10 lines are bordered by green bands on both sides and between the green bands there is a little bit of white line. So the white line is the inner bark of the tree. As the inner bark grows outwards and thickens, the green stuff, it grows the green stuff, the green stuff is the under layer of the outer bark and as the outer bark thickens even further, the top of the outer bark are these 10 lines that become a little bit scaly as, as the tree ages. So this is what you're seeing, this is what causes this stripe feature. If we go further down here, you can see that the, these 10 ridges are getting wider and wider and the height difference is even more pronounced even though it's still a shallow ridge in terms of surface smoothness. You can see the white inner bark is getting covered over gradually more and more and overgrown and less of the green underside of the outer bark is shown until such a point that if we go down the tree trunk almost all of the white inner bark is overgrown by the ever widening ridges of the outer bark and it's more woody and more scaly at, at some points. So that's why this is called striped maple, really easy to identify it. This stripiness, like I said, continues to smaller branches, to even smaller branches, all the way out to the twigs. The twigs, which are second year features on a tree, also have the same white and green layering showing there. The twigs start here and these annular nodes here and here. And these are shoots here, green shoots. And on the green shoots you can see just a few white speckles, that's all you get. So that's why it's called oh, striped maple. Why it's called moosewood or moose maple is because of the leaves. The leaves are favorite food for moose and deer that likes uh, feeding on it. And the bark is food for beavers and some small mammals, the bark and the buds that they eat. The leaves are fairly distinct. Three lobed leaves that are very shallow in terms of being lobed. 
the lobes end in a sharp point. They look like this in terms of proportions. Now sometimes you can argue that these three lobes are actually five and uh, yes I can see that this leaf vein is going to develop maybe a fourth and fifth uh, leaf lobe as the as the leaf gets wider in this direction and these leaves develop there and on some other leaves it's maybe a little further ahead in terms of developing five lobes here is number four and and the tip of number five would be here so but typically if you go with three lobes or so so this is how the leaves look like a unique feature among all maples is that the leaf margin is double toothed. That's how double toothed leaf margin looks like. On most other maple species, the leaf margin is just smooth from lobe to lobe and even between lobes and everywhere else. So that's how the leaves look like, old leaves or mature leaves. Some younger leaves or neoformed leaves can be seen maybe on this tree here where I can reach it easier maybe maybe this uh, this one somewhat younger you can kind of see that the uh, it, it does have three lobes the the second lobe starting here and the third lobe will develop here and there are no points here no sharp points to the lobes just yet this one is also kind of along the same lines or uh, stage of development and on the same tree here is another leaf with five lobes and if you keep looking at some of these leaves some might even show seven lobes on some rare occasion but most of them three plus maybe two more of them what's really interesting about striped maple its biology to be exact is that male and female flowers pollen flowers and seed flowers are normally found on different trees but what striped maple can do is kind of unique even among trees is that it can change between bearing pollen flowers one year and bearing seed flowers the next year in other words it can change its gender now I, I know usually trees are not associated with gender but hey if it's making pollen one year and making seeds the other year it's changing its gender that's what it is what these dried down structures are these are last year's uh, 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 stalks for the seed let me see there so here is a seed cluster so those are the stalks from the seed clusters and these samaras are held onto this central stalk on it with smaller stalks you can kind of see the samaras or the helicopter seeds stalks so that's what you see here dried down from last year so last year this was still a seed bearing uh, specimen here or or plant it, it didn't change since last year the angle between these samaras initially they start out at around 180 degrees or so but eventually when they finish they will finish with a 90 degree angle or so between them maybe some of these are bigger and more along the ripening stage there you can kind of see that these ones here are getting closer to 90 degrees of angle so that's how striped maker looks like it's really easy to identify it and it's a beautiful tree it's quite interesting too in terms of its biology